Well guys, last night I was doing what I do every single week. I was going through my different stock market portfolios, specifically the public account last night. And I was just going through all the different positions. I was looking at it in depth and I was thinking, do I want to add to any of these positions? Do I want to subtract from any of these positions? This is something I do every single week with my stock market accounts. And generally speaking, it's a non-event. Meaning essentially, usually there's not any moves made. I just look at it and I'm like, okay, yeah, I feel comfortable with everything. I have and we just move on and there's really no additions or subtractions unless we're in a really weak market or some really good deals out there then I'll be adding like crazy but in terms of selling that is pretty dang rare but I was looking at one position very specifically last night and I've had some thoughts about selling this one very recently because some things have changed and that was Ubity Booba Stock, one of my favorite nicknames of any stock I own. Ubity Booba Stocks. So this is a stock I'm up well over $6,000 on. And so last night I had some thoughts about, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and sell this one, okay? And I went ahead and did it. I let everybody in the Discord chat know under the breadcrumbs tab, guys, please don't leak this because I didn't want to like, you know, the stock price to sell off massively or something like that. I didn't want to cause any panic in the market. I was like, I got to get out of this one. I just, you know, there's some things have changed, which we're going to talk about in this video. And I went ahead and uh, I sold out of my thousand shares in the public account. I put a very low limit there just in case the market was down massively and it ended up getting sold at 34 something here today. Uh, so I'm happy. I made a very, very nice profit on this one. I would have loved to hold it long term and I want to kind of explain in this video why I decided to sell the Uber stock, the Uber Booba. Why did I decide to sell that one? Number two, I want to talk about if I would ever buy Uber stock back again and if I am willing to buy Uber stock back again, what price does Uber stock need to be at for me to say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and buy this one back, okay? And number three, we're going to talk about what I will buy with the proceeds of the money, which I think, I think it was like 34 thousand dollars and some change or something like that because the stock got sold at 34 something and I owned a thousand shares in the public account so it's over 34 thousand hey man you know a profit's a profit you know over six thousand and anybody that holds ubers long term like I hope you guys do amazing and I hope this stock goes to 60 80 hundred dollars a share and I hope uh over time uh you know I look back and I'm like dang I should have I should have kept that money in uber stock you know I hope that is definitely a situation but I want to get into these three things here today hope you enjoy this as always make sure you smash the thumbs up button and and by the way, the massive Memorial Day sale is now ongoing. That will be the pinned comment down there if you want to go ahead and take advantage of that. Basically, becoming master of stock market, stock options mastering six months in the private group for way less than a new iPhone, okay? So if you ever wanted to take things to next level when it comes to stock market investing, this is your opportune time, okay? The link to go ahead and get in on this huge sale, once again, is going to be the pinned comment down there, okay? So here's the three situations in which I sell a stock, okay? Number one, if the fundamentals have changed with the business, the business model, and, and changed for the worse, like I don't really like it as much, okay? That's reason number one. Reason number two is if the stock is overvalued, like sometimes you just get in a stock, it goes up so much, so fast, that it gets to a place where you're just like, this isn't even a good deal anymore. Like I'm actually holding an overvalued stock now. And if I'm ever in that situation, I go ahead and sell the stock. Number three is if I need to put the money somewhere else. So if I look at a stock and I'm like, ah, this stock over here is okay, but there's this other much bigger opportunity over here I need to be in. Sometimes I'll sell off a stock and go ahead and put the money over there. Okay. Now in this scenario, the fundamentals have changed with the business. Okay. That is why I am selling the Uber shares here today. The, that's the main reason by far and away. It's just the fundamentals with Uber's business model have changed. And in my opinion, they've changed for the worse. Okay. Let's go through my, my old bull thesis for Uber stock. This is what it was. Okay. Number one, rideshare will continue to be a beast, meaning it will continue to grow and big profits were upcoming. Okay. That was one of my bullish theses. Number two, Uber Eats would continue to be strong and get to profitability in 2022. Number three, Uber Freight is a massive growth opportunity for the company. And that has something that, you know, was a sneaky growth opportunity. Number Number four, Uber Air is the next level of transportation in cities. That was basically where they could use, you know, these massive drones to fly people around and whatnot, especially in very condensed cities. Uh, you know, that was going to be very cool. Number five, Uber could compete with Tesla and autonomous taxi networks. So, you know, Tesla, in my opinion, that's one of my other investments. I think that's going to be likely the number 
one or number two player, an autonomous taxi networks, I think they have a legit shot of winning it. And I thought Uber would be the other player in that space, okay? Number six, Dara, he's a, he's a proven great CEO in, in the public markets. He's done this, okay? Number seven, Uber has innovation at its core and will continue to disrupt other industries. And so when I looked at all this when it came to Uber stock, and especially when I was buying the stock in the 20s, it was all very, very attractive. And I looked at this as I was like, this is a stock that has a chance to, you know, triple its stock price over the next, you know, three, five years. That's the way I looked at this one. I was buying in the 20s and I thought this could easily be a $60, $80 stock in the future based upon my bull thesis there, okay? But the fact is things have deteriorated massively for this company, okay? Number one, ride share continue to be a beast and big profits coming? No, okay, just no, okay? The Roni Rona has completely devastated the ride sharing business. I mean, we're looking at Uber, demand for rides was down 80% in April, 80% percent imagine that that is just a fall through the floor okay just absolutely uh, you know horrible horrible and remember rideshare was the only business that was getting the profitability for uber and it's gotten so bad for them that they had to lay off 3,500 employees okay and that was like a week and a half ago and it wasn't even enough then four days ago they had to lay off another 3,000 employees, okay? A massive amount of the employees of Uber are just gone. And these aren't like they're laying off drivers or something like that, okay? Remember, drivers, and if you're, you're you know, somebody that does driving for Uber, you're an independent contractor, okay? So you're not even counted in any of those numbers. These are actual employees, a lot of them corporate, a lot of them that help with growth of the company, administrative work, all those sorts of things. Massive, massive layoffs, okay? And here's the worst part rideshare might not even ever get back to 2019 levels it, it remains a big question mark if that's going to happen and this is the biggest worry. it's one thing if it was just like well we got the roni rona situation going on right now you know rideshare it's going to be fine you know in a year from now and it's going to be growing like crazy again in terms of growing over 2019 levels okay of course it's going to grow over these awful numbers i have right now but the question is will it grow bigger than 2019 and if it ever does does like how much and now I have real real questions about this okay the fact is uber gets a lot of its rideshare business from big cities and from big workplaces that you know big companies that have a lot of employees getting driven to work that don't own cars okay square just told employees that they can work from home permanently permanently not just for like the next couple months permanently okay Twitter says staff can continue working from home permanently permanently imagine it's just just those two companies alone imagine how many employees use uber day in and day out for rides you know to, to basically those companies offices okay this is just two companies but imagine how much money just uber makes in revenue over a course of a year from those employees getting driven to work then back home then to work then back home day in and day out okay the fb starts planning for permanent remote work from home this is going on all across silicon valley which you know for uber san francisco is their biggest and best market but it's not just there it's big cities across the country and across the world are starting to do more work from home which essentially means if you're uber your opportunity just got way less small more and more people working from home equals less tam for uber tam means total addressable market so which essentially means with all these companies starting to, and here's the thing with companies, okay? One, they're realizing they can do remote work. Their company can function from folks working from home. And so that hits them and then they start understanding, oh, wait a minute, this is gonna be a potential massive cost savings if our business can, can operate just as efficiently from everybody working from their home than, than what it was basically when everybody was at the office. This is a massive potential cost saving for the company. Because imagine how much money these big corporations, you know, use just on office space, right? 
Apple built a new beautiful headquarters recently, and that, that headquarters, it, you know, it's a little outside of San Francisco, it costs billions of dollars. Facebook headquarters, billions of dollars. Google, all these big companies. And then you think about all the smaller companies. Their headquarters are still hundreds of millions of dollars or tens of millions of dollars. And just imagine the cost savings for these companies. Imagine the, how much less insurance they have to have for those properties. Imagine how much less capital expenditures in, in terms of like continue to add and add to these campuses in, in very expensive real estate areas, okay? So the fact is, all those less and less people potentially going long term to their workplaces day in and day out, that's a way less total addressable market for Uber and that's a very, very bad news thing for Uber overall, okay? Now, it's not just rideshare, here's the other problem. So Uber Eats, you know, it's stronger than ever and that's great news for Uber, okay? But Uber Freight, massive growth opportunity, now I'm starting to have, you know, big doubts about that. With how many cuts, you know, Dara's done basically at the company, I'm not sure that Uber Freight's gonna be able to really thrive and grow. And, and who knows, maybe they're just gonna end up spinning that company off or just getting out of that. And so therefore, one of my other big bullish theses just goes bye-bye. Uber Air, next level of transportation, with all these cuts Uber has right now and trying to conserve cash, I'm not so sure about Uber Air being the next level of transportation. We'll see about that. Now I really got big questions there, okay? Uber competing with Tesla when it comes to autonomous taxi networks? Well, if the company continues to cut on all this stuff, you know, how are they gonna compete with Tesla? I mean, we know Tesla already probably has a big advantage here with having the, the massive fleet of Teslas on the road, collecting data constantly, right? Every time these vehicles are on self-driving mode, and now Uber's cutting, you know, their business so much, they're gutting it, they're cutting, you know, costs all over the place, and now somehow they're gonna compete with Tesla. In my opinion, Tesla's gonna have autonomous taxi networks on the road, at least within the next three years, okay? Who knows how many they'll have out there, but I believe within the next three years for sure, Tesla will have autonomous taxi networks out there. There's no doubt in my mind, okay? And is Uber gonna be able to get there? Mm, I'm not so sure about that. I'm really having a lot of questions now, okay? You know, Dar is still a proven good CEO, they still have that, but Uber's innovation core that will disrupt many industries, how are they gonna do that? If, if they're continuing to cut employees, cut employees, they're gonna lose a lot of talent at the company and they're gonna lose a lot of that innovation at their core. And, and if anything, Uber's going the other way with this, right? Uber's just trying to focus on their two main businesses, Rideshare and Uber Eats. And it seems like everything else is just like, we're not even worried about that other stuff. And so that takes away that, that huge innovation away from the company. And you know, when I look at Uber, we're talking about a $60 billion market cap, not talking about some really cheap company that has a really, no, this is a $60 billion market capitalization on this company. And when you're talking about $60 billion market cap, you know, you better have some very big opportunities in front of us. And it seems like if Uber is doing anything, they're taking away from their big opportunities, okay? And remember, when it came to Uber, I bought this, why? I bought this as a major growth stock. I bought this as a stock that I was like, they're gonna grow and grow and grow and become a massive company, a company that's worth $100 billion, $200 billion, $300 billion uh, down the road. And now I'm like, I don't know, guys. I'm not so sure about this company becoming a $200 billion market cap, $300 billion market cap, because it, they're just continuing to downsize the business, downsize the opportunity, downsize the TAM, the total addressable market. And if they continue to do that, then the chances company gets to become a massive company goes down and down and down, okay? Remember, when I bought into the stock, it was being pitched as basically the Amazon of transportation. Dara used to say this all the time, you know, we're gonna be the Amazon of transportation. That's the future for Uber. But thanks to Roni Rona, I don't think we're gonna get to see that future. I mean, it's pretty clear they're cutting employees left and right, they're cutting down the business, they're exiting businesses left and right. The total addressable market, pretty much almost every day for Uber right now is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you think about becoming an Amazon, you know, all you think about is your total addressable market getting bigger and bigger and bigger and going after bigger and bigger opportunities. And it seems like Uber, and unfortunately it's mainly because of Roni Rona, it's just going the other way, man. They're, they're just, their opportunity is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, literally as the minutes go on, okay? So that is why I sold Uber. It's a fundamental reason that the, the business has changed massively and for the worse. Number two question was, if I would ever buy Uber again, and what price would it take for me to buy Uber again if I'm willing to do that, okay? And I will continue to track Uber very heavily. I'll keep it on my watch list. 
And, uh, you know, if you're wondering, would I ever buy Uber back? Yes, I would be willing to buy Uber back, but I'm looking for under $20 a share. I need this one quite a bit cheaper with uh, the fact that I believe this company has a, a much less total addressable market now for all their business lines and I have a lot of questions about some of these potential huge categories and the fact that autonomous taxi networks are, are just a few years away and here we are with Uber, you know, are they going to be there or not? If they're not there, you know, the biggest cost to these cars a lot of times is a person in the front seat. And if that person in the front seat's removed, you know, I have a lot of questions about how Uber is going to compete with Tesla in the space. So anyways, I I'm willing to buy it back, but it has to be under $20. And if you think that's impossible, just remember, this stock was under $14 a share back in March, okay? So for it to go under 20, it's definitely a possibility. We absolutely need some weakness in the market for that to happen. And we definitely need a lot of doubt around Uber's business model in general to get it down to under $20. But yeah, anyways, I'll keep track of it. Um, I, you know, I hope everybody does tremendous that wants to stay in the stock long term. Um, and I'm willing to get back in it, but I got to get it for a much cheaper price because the fact is this wasn't the Uber I bought into. It's just not, okay? It's just not at all, okay? Number three, what will I buy with that money, okay? So remember, I bought Uber stock, what? As a massive growth stock with massive opportunity in front of itself, okay? So in terms of if I'm thinking about buying a stock with that money, which was like $34,000 in proceeds or something like that, I need a stock with massive growth potential. I'm not gonna, I don't, I don't need another value stock. I don't need another solid dividend stock. I got plenty of those type of stocks in my portfolio, okay? I don't even need an easy money stock. I got plenty of those in my portfolio. I need something with massive growth opportunity, the type of company that has a chance to 3X, 5X, 10X their business over the next, you know, five to 10 years. That's what I need, okay? And that's what Uber stock used to represent to me. And unfortunately, because of Rony Rona, it doesn't represent that. So that's that's what I need, okay? And I need a company that has innovation at its core, that is disrupting maybe a major industry right now, if not two major industries, but will likely disrupt several more industries over time. And it's just as that innovation at its core, they're like, we're gonna take down this next, we're gonna take down this next. I need that, okay? I absolutely need that in one of these companies, okay? And honestly, at the right now, I don't know what company it is. I'm gonna put a lot of thought into this. Over this weekend, I'm gonna look at valuations. I'm gonna look at a ton of different companies out there. And I really am gonna be looking through the comment section. Let me know what stock you think I should buy. Something, it, once again, it has to have massive growth potential and it has to have a, you know, that opportunity to 3X, 5X, 10X the stock price over the next five, 10 years with innovation at the core and hopefully have you know, not too crazy of a valuation. If you guys know that stock, let me know in that comment section. I will be going through this comment section like nobody's business and uh, you know, I I'm looking for something special out there. So you know, let me know what you guys think and I'm gonna spend a lot of time this weekend looking at many various companies because I gotta find somewhere to put that money that has massive growth in front of it. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, don't forget the massive Memorial Day sales going on. Six months in the private group, lifetime access to become a master of the stock market, lifetime access to stock options mastery, all for less than a new iPhone. So you wanna go ahead and check out that. The pinned comment down there will be what you need to click on to go ahead and take advantage of that. And uh, once you're in, by the way, join us in the Discord chat. Say hello to everybody. And uh, without further ado, thank you for watching and have a great day day.